Question, why must the Redeemer be truly God? Answer, that because of his divine nature, his obedience and suffering will be perfect and effective. Friends, have you ever heard of the story about the day Santa Claus punched a person and was thrown into prison? As the story goes, during the first ecumenical council of Nicaea in AD 325, there was a big argument over the divinity of Christ. Arius, a heretical bishop, believed that Christ was not divine, but rather just a creature. The council challenged him to defend his claims in front of his brother bishops, including jolly old St. Nicholas, aka Santa Claus. St. Nicholas tried to listen patiently, but he considered Arius' proposal so radical, so heretical, that he could no longer contain himself. In the middle of the speech, he rose with a scowl, charged towards Arius and punched him right in the face. As a result, Emperor Constantine threw St. Nicholas into prison. It was in this council that the divinity of Christ was confirmed. The vote was not even close, with 99% affirming the full divinity of Christ. Note that the divinity of Christ was not decided by the votes, but rather the votes affirmed what the church already believed through scripture. Jesus himself affirmed his divinity and that he was one with the Father. As our sins were committed against God, only God can forgive these sins. A mere man cannot forgive the sins we have committed against God, but God can. Therefore, Jesus needed to also be fully God so that his obedience and suffering was perfect and so that God's justice would be completely and eternally satisfied. To this very day, we still recite the Nicene Creed that Christ is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Why must Redeemer be truly God? That because of His divine nature, His obedience and suffering will be perfect and effective. Amen.